When I was a freshman at Harvard, there was a senior I knew on the cheer team. That was the connection that we had. She was excelling academically. She was doing lab research. She was also taking an MCAT prep course. That way she could apply to medical school. I remember seeing her, looking at all of the things that she was doing and wondering how in the world did she make time for this? How did she do it? Little did I know that in four years I would be doing something similar that I would be working as a full-time employee at the Retina Associates of Cleveland, while also serving as the International Second Vice President of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and doing a research project of my own. I didn't know any of that, but it happened. You're probably thinking, whoa, both of those scenarios sound like quite a lot. Studying for the MCAT, whether you are a full-time student or a full-time employee is going to be a big thing in your life. But that is exactly what this video is about, giving you some tips and tricks on how to succeed with that experience. So before we get into everything, hello, my name is Jasmine McCoy. Thank you for clicking in to drop by. But if you are a returner, it is definitely nice to see you back. The first thing we're going to get into is time management. It's true that we all have the same 24 hours in a day, so that is where I started first. I looked at what is it that I do in a full 24 hour day. So midnight, you know, you're sleeping, sleeping, sleeping until you wake up, you wake up, you get ready for work in my case, or if you are a full time student, you get ready for class. So I get ready for work to start at 8 a.m. I work from 8 a.m. to roughly 430. I get home at around five o'clock, then it's time for me to shower and eat. That takes me to roughly six o'clock. And after that, I thought, okay, six o'clock is when my technically free time starts in the day. If six o'clock is the start of the free time, then what is the end of the free time? And for me, that was 1030. That way I could have 30 minutes to get myself together. That way I could go to sleep at a good hour, 11 o'clock for me. And I thought, okay, six to 1030, that's four and a half hours of free time. I can work with this. I can work with four and a half hours of free time during the week. Obviously, all of my time is not going to be spent studying. I'm going to spend some of it just relaxing, doing my self care, exercising. So I'm going to make a minimum of two hours of my time during those work days be dedicated to studying. And my minimum was two, my goal was three for those weekdays. But then I looked at my work block a little more closely. Yes, I am going to work from roughly 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. But over the course of that time, I am not always on. I am not always working. There are breaks. And even if you are a student, you do have breaks in between classes. So I thought, hmm, okay, Jasmine, we're going to make use of those breaks. When you have time in between patients, you're going to take your phone out and instead of going to Instagram, instead of going to Facebook, TikTok, whatever your poison might be, I'm going to make sure that the first thing that I open is going to be either some flashcards or a note sheet that I have made. That way I can review something and make good use of this small bits of free time that I have when I am working. The one thing that I told myself is that I always have time to study. I always have time to put something towards my education to make sure that when it comes time to take the test, I can be even more secure in the fact that I know what I am doing. And I can do that at work, but also after work. Up next is budgeting. Originally, I wanted to take an MCAT test prep course just like the senior that I knew because it had been very beneficial to her. But then I started looking at those MCAT test prep courses, guaranteed 510, guaranteed 512, guaranteed 515, winter boot camp, summer boot camp, and they were very expensive. They cost anywhere from $1,500 to $3,500. And that was not the kind of disposable income I had. Side note, that was also not the type of disposable time that I had to be able to devote three hours of being in 
essentially a class from 7 to 10 p.m. every night of the week and then doing whatever homework the test prep course had assigned to me because of my um, because of my commitments as the international second vice president of AKA, that was not something that I would be able to do, but it's okay. I realized that I did not need it because there were many other options of being able to get yourself the test prep that you need on a budget. What I did is I ended up paying for the AAMC online only bundle. And this was something that I feel like was the best decision I ever made because it was one created by the people who create the test Two, it was more than 2,300 practice questions. So I'm thinking, okay, that's a good amount. By the time that I finish all 2,300 plus questions, I doubt that there will be anything else that they can throw at me. It gave me an entire year of access to the, to the questions and the answers. Another option that I was heavily considering is something called UWorld. And UWorld has many, many options for its students. There is the $249 uh, package for 90 days with 2,650 questions. There is the $299 option for 180 days access with one reset. There is a $349 uh, package for one year with a one reset option. All of these were great. They were things that I was heavily considering, but then I decided against them because the AAMC plus those U World questions, I thought, mm, definitely not gonna get through all of those. And then your final option, your most um, low cost option is going to be leveraging the pre-med or MCAT listservs that are at your school. So without question, without fail, there is always going to be some group of graduating seniors, maybe some juniors who are going to be saying, hey, I'm getting rid of my MCAT test prep book. Uh, I'm selling it for $70 or however much it is that they're going for. Maybe they're just giving it away. Maybe it's new, maybe it's used, maybe it's unused. But these are very valid options because the budgeting, the price point that you have for studying for the MCAT is a very personal thing. And it's something that only you can make the decision for. Are you going to pay thousands of dollars for a test prep course? Are you going to pay hundreds for a, uh, a bundle of packages and tests that you can take? Or are you going to um, scavenge across emails, lists, listservs, people that you know in person to be able to get old materials that are still useful that can guide you when doing your own MCAT test prep? That's what you need to decide. Up next is the planning. And if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. That is what I told myself when it came to studying for the MCAT. So I took this very, very seriously. That the first recorded day that I studied for the MCAT was August 2nd, 2021. Now, when you look at that date, August 2021, and when I had scheduled to take the MCAT, January 18th of 2022, that is 171 days but I didn't get serious about studying until September 18th. By then my 171 days had dwindled down to 124 days, just a little bit over four months to get ready for the MCAT. And that's very important because the next thing I had to look at was the three phases that they suggest people study in. First, content review, then practice questions, and then um, practice tests and reviewing missed questions. So I did all of that over the course of those four months. And I'll do a video later more in depth on how and what my study process looked like over those four months. But just know that you need to plan how it is that you're going to study, when you're going to do your concept review, when you're going to start practice questions, how you are going to space out your practice tests because you don't want your first test to be the actual test. These are all things that you have to think about when planning for your MCAT. Up next is diligence. I had to go back to being a student and I was a full-time employee. So I had to get back into that student, that learning, 
that sit down for three hours and just look at your materials type of headspace that I had as a student that I had not been required to use for quite some time since I had already graduated in 2021. But May of 2021. So May, June, July, August, it's just been four months. I can get back into that kind of headspace very quickly. But I had to be completely honest with myself. Jasmine, you got to start studying again. You got to start doing your practice problems again. You have to make sure that you have the mental fortitude, the mental stamina to be able to take this seven and a half hour test because you're going to have to be able to do it. So I had to make sure that work comes before play. And that is something that has stuck with me since the beginning of my childhood education. We would come back from elementary school. The first thing that we would do, mom would sit us down at the, um, the kitchen table. We would start our math. We would start our science, whatever it is. We would sit there at the kitchen table doing that before doing anything else. And that is the same formula for success that I use. When I get home, I shower, I eat, I sit down and do my work. Work comes before play. That one to two hours of free time, of watching TV, of watching movies with my family, that can wait for after I have sat down and studied something substantial for my MCAT. Another thing that I had to remind myself is that consistency is key that I need to show up every day for my future self unless I want to completely screw her over by having her cram the night before, not the night before, that would have a very low chance of success, but I need to set my future self up for success. The way that I do that is by not procrastinating, it's by being consistent, it is by making this a ritual, making this a habit, making it a part of my daily life. So that is exactly what I did. The next thing that was important for my MCAT studying was finality. I told myself, I am only going to do this once. I am only going to take the MCAT once. I am only going to go through this cycle once. I do not want to do this again. And I completely understand. I love the kinds of journeys that I hear about where people are able to retake the MCAT, they are able to show growth, they are able to apply in later cycles, they are able to show growth. That is something that is very noble, that is very inspiring. But that is not what I want for myself. I would like to be able to do this one and done. So I made sure we're going to do this one and done. Another thing is that I was also on a timetable because the products that I had purchased to do my MCAT study, I only had access to them for one year. And I don't want to pay that $300 at a later time because I have to restudy for the MCAT. That is nothing that I want to do. And lastly, I was ready to move on to the next chapter of my life. I have been living at home since March of 2020. That's almost two and a half years. I am ready to move on and go to medical school because that has been my goal since the very beginning. I am ready to start learning again. I am ready to get back on that journey of improvement, of reaching that goal of becoming a physician. And I'm ready to be with people my own age again. I love you, mom and dad, but I am ready to go and be with other people my own age. So we are only doing this one time and I made sure that I kind of like manifested that not just thinking it but manifested it in my work ethic because things don't work unless you do and the last thing that you have to do the thing that you have to be doing consistently throughout your studying for the MCAT journey is you have to record your progress now that can look different for anyone it depends on who you ask and how they do it for me, it was looking at my Google Calendar, seeing what categories I had studied, what uh, section of the MCAT practice questions I had done. It was looking at my Excel spreadsheets of what was my last grade, uh, not grade, what was my last score on the MCAT of this section? How many questions did I get correct last time? Okay, making some graphs, doing a little bit of 
um, statistics type things. That way I can visualize what it is that I have done and how it is that I have changed from beginning to end. Because when you walk into your real MCAT, you need to have some kind of inkling of around where it is you're going to test. And you need to be okay with that. You need to be okay with that number, otherwise you have wasted your time and your money in that MCAT exam. So all of these things are what I used in order to have a successful time of studying for the MCAT as a full-time employee, or these are things that you can use if you are studying for the MCAT as a full-time student. So there will be other videos that I make about this studying for the MCAT, but also for my actual medical school application journey because I am literally in the middle of that right now. I had an interview with one of my schools today, so that was exciting. And the process is not yet finished, but I am gonna take you all along with me for it. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.